Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I will look at the hardware requirements for installing Hyper-V in Windows Server 2016. By the end of this video you'll know what is required to install Hyper-V. Later on in the video I'll also demonstrate how to check whether or not your server meets these requirements. So let's get started. To begin with let's look at some of the best practices for Hyper-V. First of all, when installing Hyper-V, Microsoft recommends that you dedicate an entire server to running Hyper-V. In other words, you should install no other roles on your server other than the Hyper-V role. Or to put it another way, a Hyper-V server should be just that, a Hyper-V server and nothing else. Any additional roles you plan on deploying should be installed onto one of your virtual machines instead and not the Hyper-V host server itself. Next, when deploying your Hyper-V server, Microsoft recommends the server core interface, not the desktop experience interface. This is because server core requires fewer resources such as CPU and RAM than the desktop experience interface. By running your Hyper-V server in server core mode, you're effectively freeing up resources for your virtual machines. What's more, server core servers require fewer updates than desktop experience servers. Fewer updates mean fewer reboots, and fewer reboots means less downtime for your virtual machines. With the best practices now covered, let's take a look at the actual requirements for Hyper-V. To install Hyper-V in Windows Server 2016, you'll require a 64-bit processor. You cannot install Hyper-V onto any 32-bit system. Fortunately, Windows Server 2016 is only available in a 64-bit architecture. There's no 32-bit release of Windows Server 2016. Therefore, any computer running Windows Server 2016 will, by design, have a 64-bit processor. However, as well as having a 64-bit architecture, your server's processor must also support some additional features. The first of these is SLAT, or Second Level Address Translation. Second Level Address Translation is a feature that reduces the amount of overhead generated from the hypervisor. By reducing the load on the hypervisor, Second Level Address Translation essentially frees up CPU cycles for your virtual machines. If your Hyper-V server is using an Intel processor, SLAT is commonly referred to as EPT, or Extended Page Table. Amongst the AMD family of processors, SLAT is known as RVI, or Rapid Virtualization Indexing. Next, your processor must support Hardware-Enforced Data Execution Prevention, or simply DEP. Hardware-enforced data execution prevention made its debut back in 2004 with the release of Windows XP Service Pack 2. Since it's been around for so long, there's a good chance that any modern system will support DEP. Hardware-enforced data execution prevention is essentially a form of security. DEP uses the processor in your system to mark memory as either executable or non-executable. In a nutshell, this prevents code from being executed in memory unless the memory location explicitly contains executable code. In today's world, clever hackers are able to target certain systems by inserting executable code into non-executable memory locations. Hardware-enforced data execution prevention is designed to prevent this type of attack. If your Hyper-V server has an Intel processor installed, Hardware-enforced data execution prevention is referred to as Execute Disable, or simply XD. AMD processors, on the other hand, refer to the technology as No Execute, or NX. The next requirement is a BIOS or UEFI firmware that supports hardware-assisted virtualization. With hardware-assisted virtualization, virtual machines are essentially fooled into thinking they're running on actual hardware rather than software. Hardware-assisted virtualization made its debut for both AMD and Intel processors back in 2006. 
so there's a very good chance that any computer manufactured in the last 12 years or so will support this feature. It's worth noting at this point that hardware-assisted virtualization is disabled for some computers by default. If this is the case with your system, you're required to go into the BIOS or UAFI firmware for your server and enable the feature manually. If you're required to enable the feature, some of the more common listings for this option are Virtualization Technology Virtualization Technology VTX Virtualization Technology VTX slash VTD and AMD V. For your system, you could find that the option is listed differently, but these are among the most common listings that I personally have found. The last requirement I will look at for Hyper-V is the RAM memory requirement. In addition to running Hyper-V, your host system must have enough RAM memory to run all of the virtual instances on that computer. Microsoft states in their official documentation that each Hyper-V host should have at least 4 GB of RAM. This should be considered an absolute minimum. In the real world, you should definitely aim for more. I've worked with Hyper-V for a long time and I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to beef up your Hyper-V host with plenty of RAM. Lack of memory in Hyper-V computers can cause problems such as poor performance and virtual machines refusing to start, for example. That covers the requirements for Hyper-V. So I'll now change over to my Windows Server 2016 server so I can now demonstrate how to check whether your system meets the requirements I've looked at. This is a clean installation of Windows Server 2016. No roles or features have been installed yet. From the desktop of my Windows Server 2016 server, I will first right-click on the Start button. From the options that appear, I will select the option Command Prompt Admin. This opens a command prompt with administrative privileges. From the Command Prompt window, I will enter command System Info and then press Enter. At this point, the Windows will start to gather information about your system. In most cases, this should only take a few moments. When the command finally completes, System Info will display all of the information it's gathered about your system. Using this report, you can determine straight away whether or not your system is capable of running Hyper-V. To begin with, I will look at the section of the report labelled Total Physical Memory. This is essentially the amount of RAM memory installed in the computer. If you recall from earlier, Hyper-V requires at least 4 GB of RAM to install. In the case of my system, notice that I have over 16,300 MB of RAM installed, which is approximately 16 GB, more than enough. The next section I will look at is the Hyper-V requirements section. From here I can see the processor and firmware requirements I've looked at earlier. If your system meets a particular requirement, System Info will mark the requirement with Yes. If it does not meet the requirement, it will be marked with a No instead. As you can see, all of the requirements in my system are marked as Yes, meaning they're all supported, including second level address translation and data execution prevention. I can also see that virtualization is enabled in the firmware for my system which essentially means that this server fully supports hardware-assisted virtualization. Having consulted this report, I can safely say that my system fully meets the requirements for Hyper-V and I should have no problem installing the role. Well, that covers the requirements for installing Hyper-V in Windows Server 2016. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to install the Hyper-V role so that you can get your Hyper-V server up and running. I hope that you've enjoyed this video from Tech Tips from Will. For more tech tips, feel free to browse our collection of videos on YouTube. And to be notified of new videos when we release them, consider subscribing to our channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.